Bubba's poet, Francis Brabazon, in 1954, just two years after he first met his beloved, Meha Baba, wrote this poem. We have added songs to punctuate the poem. Quoting from Francis' introduction to Journey with God. On the 26th of February this year, I received a cable from Mahabaleshwar, India, inviting me to come to India for a fortnight's work. Signed, Meher Baba. I had met Meher Baba nearly two years before at Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. This meeting was the culmination of 10 years of spiritual study and search for that ideal guide in whom I could unreservedly place my confidence. That man who, I felt, had mastered every difficulty and obstacle which still confronted me. During the previous 10 years, I had studied the methods and practices of the great Sufi schools and had read fairly widely in Vedanta, Buddhism and other systems, including Taoism and Confucianism. In Meher Baba, I found that person who not merely knew these things, but was the living embodiment of all these systems and knowledges. In other words, he was a man who had reached the summit of truth in religious terms. Was God realized? Of course, I knew that Baba, as everyone affectionately called him, had been saying for many years that he was God realized was, in fact, an incarnation of Godhead, a God-man. In the same sense and meaning as Christ is believed to be, to Christians, Christ, as Muhammad by the Mohammedans and by, as Buddha by the Buddhists, etc. And I knew that the Sufis and thousands of people everywhere had recognized this claim. But, as with Thomas, I had to see for myself. Well, I had seen. And the cry of the deepest parts of my consciousness had been answered. I was satisfied that if ever it was possible to see God on this earth, I had seen him. And as time went on, the proof that this had not been merely some emotional conversion was shown by the simple fact that a true creativity began in me a few days after this meeting and has continued ever since. And now, within a few weeks, I would be seeing this man again. Go to war, Tim, alone. 
begins with a quote from Walt Whitman, passage to India, passage to more than India. The flight. We left Sydney 9.30 p.m. and with the lights out in the plane, crossed over the city, a sea and ribbons of light. When, black, when the black gulf of the harbor and the north shore, lights thinning out into a final blank night, below us, the chart showed a straight line through Dubba, Burke, Honkari, Darwin. A pure flight line. Arriving at Darwin in the dark of the morning, dark heat rising from the tarmac, and took off again at sunup, sun green of foliage, and rose over the sea, which was crinkled oxide of chromium on canvas. Until, as one watched closely, small white flecks of waves crawled infinitesimal steps over the green and sailed on high above the snow plateau of clouds. And climbed 14,000 feet. And the sea now tint of warm cerulean. A fathomless eye shot at the edges of beach of Roti, Timor, and Lombok with the green light and the occasional land checked in forest mountains and parcel fields of cultivation. And into this warm cerulean emptiness, God's pure eye, their sky and sea would be indistinguishable, except for the broken bar line of clouds at the furthest point of vision, and they're just green and gold. And after Jakarta, eliminating beer in the refreshment room, continuing in this dream of blue and white, with strong sun glare from bank cloud mass flying over a sky beneath and in nothing but the sky. And then, shallow water probably, the sea again, washed tint of oxide, dotted with island reflections. And again, massed cloud peaks and sheer ridges falling away into clear bottomless lakes. This incredible shifting, still, silent world out there, at Singapore, rubber-necked, flappy-eared tour of the city. On your right, on your left, this is the Tanglin area. The bungalow on the hill was built by a Chinese millionaire. We have now turned into Orchard Street. This street will eventually take us back to the centre of the city. On your right is St Andrew's Cathedral. It was built entirely of convict labour between 1856 and 1862. Back to Raffles. Who did so much for the colony. Hodo. But after dinner of no local fruits of mango, popo, or banana, I wandered the little streets, where people cooked and ate food on the narrow sidewalks, and wished I could talk with them in more than a small silent song. But this only in passing. I am not amongst my own people yet. Next morning rose again on our flight. In a few minutes, you will see below you on your left the causeway, where, uh, which the Japanese troops advanced over, reminding, without any trace of humor, how that colossal joke of mill strategy where the British built guns, casting some 20 million pounds, all facing in one way, and on, straight up the Malay Peninsula, over white fields, level to green edges, and bright blue, breaking up again into hills and gullies, at the bottom of which the trees and jungle of earth. Then blue of sea again, which on the map shows as the Bay of Bengal. Emptiness of light, an expectancy in my heart, quietly audible over the level engine drum. And then Ganges Delta, grey blue, slate blue, fertility, laced with ribbon streams of life. India. Yesterday of the stars and 
the dreams for the wind brought to my lips the pure song of the name of Mayhem. Farewell, old ancient time. I feel so young, I feel so young. No more your iron chains on his swift glance. My heart is hung. Far behind is yesterday of the stars and the dreams for the wind brought to my lips the pure song of the name of translated into speech became Namadev's song. Around here also, the song was Bhanamas, Tukaram, Ramdas, and the rest, singing for God's ears the song which pleases him. My beloved sons with whom, the same sons who shouted together in the shout which was creation, which shattered the darkness into that first lyric song called Morning. Here was Baba Gaur, here, Babajan of woman form, ancient in years, with one kiss awoke him, while yet a youth, to his glory in God. And Upasni, with a stone singing flight, brought him down again from God to work for man, a Christ, perfect in glory, infinite and supreme, perfect in detailed craft of service. In the courtyard under my window, a man squats on the ground under the sleek black hulk of a buffalo and starts milking her. And the climbing moon, now above the tops of the trees, tomorrow will rise the causal sun of all moons and births and lives. And my eyes are expected to bear his gentle beams. Each love I have gathered, I will lay at his pure feet. And now it is dawn. Another first morning, with the trees crowded with birdsong, voices in the street, a train whistle and the other engine noises, and a bullock cart with its tinkle of little bells. From earth's height, God sends out his pollen and honey gatherers. Passage to more than India, passage to the very heart fibers of my own soul, to the soul of my soul, the eye of the sun, who turns the earth and awakens each teeming day, whose sweet name parches my throat, and heaps fire upon my already burning skull of iron, of head, cauldron of rivers of sweet cooling tears. Who? I now met again, seated on the platform, from the railway station, radiant and garlanded, receiving the tear bright devotion of his devotees, I too, by some strange fortune, his sweet embrace. 
of endurance, courage, and clear thinking, who, blessed by Ramdas, toppled Aurangzeb on his throne. At one place, Possibly. one of his forts on top of the stone dome of a mountain, and on through Hyderabad of white buildings and gardens. At each train stop, even right through the night, were crowds eager for sight of their beloved. And God slept not, but also eagerly awaited his lovers. Even the Chai Baba, with his kettlebell of sweet tea in one hand and a bucket of cups in the other, would break off his song, inviting refreshment, and peer tiptoed over the heads of the crowd, disturbed and curious. At one place, as we approached the station, a small pack came panning over the dry paddocks at a quick trot, and the guard held up the train so that their thirst might be satisfied. And so, and always as, the train pulled out the cry, Avatar in Baba Ki Jai, or Hail, Living Christ. And so, all through the day, and the night, and another day, the train wound on across dry earth, awaiting the rains to bring its hidden greenness into crops and sustenance. Bearing east God, and his circle of workers, and myself, nowhere to be seen except within his heart, and in the careful hands of these, his hands, who served his slightest sign in selfless joy, and arrived at Beswada, where the crowd surged forward with a great shout of joy, and swept us from the platform through narrow streets to an open place which had been prepared, where he was welcomed with music of drums and flutes. And the silver platter bearing fruits and lighted camphor was waved before him. And the song of light was sung by his disciples, full-throated and rich in pure intensity. The same song which the morning stars and these same men had sung in the beginning, as they circled in joy around the first Christ on his first descent to earth. And there was a cry in my breast, as the first notes of my own song struggled chrysalis light from its age long engagement and spread its wings eagerly for flight. Beloved may have in the birth 
just dawn the stars were singing to you Beloved mayor, the same song they sang I'm now bringing to you So for two weeks, stopped at towns and remote villages where people had come traveling all day by bullock cart and on foot, visiting houses, cottages, huts of business executives, congressmen, and laborers. At Gunter, there were 5,000. At Alua, 12,000 had assembled. At Tadapalagudan, where Baba celebrated his birth this time on earth, 20,000 waited to pass and file before him to receive his gift of fruit and to enjoy the fireworks at night. Gopalapuran mustered 15,000, Kavor and Rajamundri on the banks of the River Godavari, 16,000 between them. Amalapuran, Rizoli and Katapati had 5,000 each. And the seaport, Gaginada, 12,000 all told. And at each place, God sat down and rolled up his sleeves to do a job of work. Baskets piled high with bananas were placed by his side. And the people, brought into file by ropes or the linked hands of his workers, filed by, each to receive a fruit from Baba's hands. And with each gift of fruit, a hidden seed of blessing for future fruiting. And in simple words taught them, those who only see this form of mine do not see me. Search in your hearts and through your hands pure work to find my truth. And know that in every service served in honesty and every act of love where you are not, I am. I am the Ancient One, highest of the high. Fortunate are those who serve and love me. Sometimes, even in the midst of this, he would glance up and flash a smile at me. Just as he had previously, as Buddha smiled on a barber who asked him whether one of such a lowly trade could follow in his way. Kabir sang, every night is for the married woman, but I have no husband. Not only am I unmarried, but also homeless, an exile in two countries. Yet, he took time to flash a smile at me. Who can describe the smile of the beloved? Dante's. What she appears when she smiles a little. Faintly describes it. So sweet and strange, a miracle it is. How can I of stubborn and unlettered mind say more? Maybe. You are the ocean that came to this drop of me. This tidiness sings to your 
majesty. May hell, may hell, may hell above. When you, with your divine voice, told me love's grand tale. May hell, may hell, may hell above. By love's sweet magic, I became your nightingale. May hell, may hell, may hell above. When you poured out your mercy in a golden rain. May hell, may hell, may hell above. My heart's desert was carpeted with flowers again. May hell, may hell, may hell above. When at long last I met you and you smiled at me. May hell, may hell, may hell above. That one moment contained eternity. Andra is water. Godavri, blessed by Rama and lives of saints who wandered along its wooded banks, bathed in its streams, sent pregnantly the breath of their spirit upon its water. Andra is water. Godavri chanted over naturally rich land by hands which are extensions of heart, not wringing the neck of the land in exploitation. Australia also. When we stop wasting waters in the city and the seas, when we have outgrown our childish vocabulary of work, consumer goods, stockpiling, security. security, all work performed without thought of God as beloved is designs in sand, signatures on water. Australia also, when God in one of his inexplicable moods of mercy, sets his white feet upon these golden shores. Andra is water, bearing upon its surface clusters of lotuses called villages, where the speech of the people is small waters, rippling over stones, and where children, strongly molded in delicate form, play, as one would imagine the children of God should play. The road followed always along the, the canal banks of the Godavari water, always beside the placid singing streams. Along this road, we met a man dressed in the rags of this world, seated before God's throne. Along this road, a youth, hot with love's fire, his eyes melting in streams of light, sang in sweet tones his own sweet soul of light, where another danced for two hours to a small, tinkling percussion accompaniment. Where a young girl, delicately as Radha, poised in love, sighed with her eyes and hands and feet again for Krishna. It was on this road that a boy, a mere child in years, improvised songs for the beloved and wept and harrying us to love God. I fold my hands before all on this road. Andra Paradiso. With no fall and no expulsion from the garden, but again with the seal of God's feet upon the earth. Now had the last day of our tour arrived. In the morning, sixteen houses visited. At each, the light was lit and the song of life, full-throated and rich in pure intensity, arose, the song of praise of God in human form. And Baba blessed the people in each house, unsealing their hearts so that the streams of living water could flow through their lives, unfolding the faces of the children into singing flowers. 
and we, we departed, each to his own place and work, each with the kiss of God's glance in his eyes. I, the first, to my island home in the southern sea. How the, <laughs> how the glory of your brow is the light of our safe journey, the love of your eyes is the mirror of our reflection. And the certainty of our arrival, how glorious you are as man, how helpless as God, so helpless that you could not hide your Godhood even behind the walls of your pain. How very man you are, how absolutely God, how very man you are, how absolutely